um, to have this this webinar and this is not the first thing we're doing this uh, very often because this uh, really is a uh, the basic for any any inspection or any 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 planting um we are going to have CEUs, uh, ISA, one CEUs, FNGLA, one CEUs, and landscape inspector, one CEUs, uh, for free. The only thing we are asking is uh, at the end of the seminar, we are going to receive a survey. So uh, please uh, answer the survey. If you don't answer, if you don't, if you do, do not answer the survey, no CEUs, very straightforward. So again, CEUs are for free, but uh, please try to answer the survey. Uh, we as a county faculty, we need uh, to check uh, if you learn something, if you if you don't learn nothing. So we need to check that. Uh, that's a very important information for Mike and, and myself. So basically, uh, try to mute yourself. And we're going to have the question and answer at the end, hopefully at the end. Uh, if you can put your uh, video on. It would be better so we can we can see some happy faces. Uh, it's very boring to see these, uh, you know, black uh, black tiles over there. So so anyhow, so let me uh, um, try to uh, share um, my screen one second. <coughs> Everybody can see it. Yes. 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 Right. Okay. Great. So I'm going to talk about uh, very short about pumps. I know many guys are not very familiar with pumps, but yes, uh, pumps have some grading. So if you are inspecting pump in a landscape, um, this is a very uh, useful information for you guys. And you have it over there. I can I will post this in the in the chat. Uh, the document you can download the document for the website. This is the, the Fisher Branch Tree Farm, and they have the, the all the 2022 Great and Standards in the in the website. So I'm going to post this later in the in the chat. So basically, I mean, I mean, we have a lot of questions about uh, grading uh, palms, and um, I don't know if I come to this laser point. And many people are very um, confused about the, the the names. When you have this uh, a clear wood, a clear trunk, a vertical clearance, overall height, these are all terms that you need to be um, clear of. Because if you are not clear, you're going to grade the palms um, in the wrong way. So clear trunk, you have clear uh, up to here, clear, clear trunk. I uh, imagine this is a royal palm, so you're going to have a crown shaft here, like a, uh, like a green tissue over there. So again, this is the clear wood, but clear trunk is different. Clear trunk is the, is the clear wood plus the crown shaft. It's very straightforward. And overall height is the, the height between the ground and the and the more the taller front. This is, this is overall height. So again, overall height, clear wood, clear trunk are different different terminology. Vert vertical clearance is another one. It's between you know the ground and the and the first front. So this is vertical clearance. Okay. Um, crown spread is is uh, you know from the tip of the of the front to the other tip of the front is crown spread spread. So these terms are very, very important, you know, to try to, to remember. All right, so um grading a palm is, is very easy. It's not so complicated like a, like a hardwood trees. So grading a palms and um, really you need to have two steps. Step number one is eliminating eliminating factors. And step number two, if leaf count. A leaf quality a root ball measure. That's it. So it's very easy, right? So what are the limiting factors? Where well, you have it, one, two, three, you have it, four. Okay, one is the p a palm weevil. If you uh, have a palm, a palm over there, you're not going to buy or you're not, not going to plant a palm with a weevil. So this is a limiting factor. 
a little yellowing, little bronzing, uh, Ganoderma, Phytoplasma, Tilaviosis, Phytophthora. If you found this in the palm, it's eliminate, eliminating factors. That's, that's it. It's very straightforward. So don't plan a, a you know, a, a, a sable that you think is a little bronzing because the palms are going to die. So why, why are you going to do that? Another one is a wood boring insect. If you found a, a palm that has some, some boring insect over there, a palmetto weevil. So why are you going to palm, a plant a palm with palmetto weevil? That's not make any sense. A depression or trunk damage. Many, many times, I mean, the, the palm suffer damage because uh, the transportation sometimes they damage themselves. That, that's not really making factors. Um, but excluding uh, injections. If you found some injections, that's not a limiting factor. Okay. Uh, if you found some uh, vertical fissures um, less than one inch, that's an, another is not a limiting factor. Uh, scars. Some palms have some natural scars, so that's not a limiting factor over there. Uh, the extreme succulent. Some palms are uh, in the in the nursery, maybe uh, too crowded because maybe in the nursery they put the, the palms, you know, too too crowded, and that's that's going to produce some of this extreme succulent. Maybe the people are effect, uh, applying too much nitrogen. If you apply too much nitrogen or too you irrigate too much, that's another cause of extreme succulent. The, petio the petioles are going to look very, very bad, very weak. So when you have this extreme succulent, you're going to see the fronts are like a hanging. They are not very, very strong. And uh, the last one is a vertical fissure. You uh, find these uh, vertical fissures exceeding one inch in depth. That's another, that's another red flag. That's another one that is going to cause some problems. So these uh, um, five uh, factors are going to, to, to make the palm to be a call. So you cannot buy or plant any palm with these uh, with, uh, with this, uh, features, okay? All right, if you found that the palms has no problem that you see, you don't see any eliminating factor over there, you need to, you need to see and go to step number two. Step number two is very easy. You're going to count how many leaves, how many fronts, healthy fronts the palm has, <clears throat> okay? And you're going to measure also the root ball when the palm is uh, growing in the field production. If the palm is in the container, you cannot, uh, you, you cannot measure a root ball, only, only the leaf, okay? So why are you going to measure the leaves? Because you've, you're going to go to this uh, ta table and the table is going to tell you, for example, uh, Parotis plant, Floria fancy, needs to have its six healthy fronts. If the Parotis has only four, it's a floral number two. Okay. Uh, if the Parotis has only five, it's Floria number one. So it's very straightforward. It's very easy. You just count the number of leaves and, and healthy leaves and that's it. And in the case of the root ball, uh, for example, parotis has to be uh, four inches, four inches the root ball. Okay, this is the, this is the, mi the minimum one. So it could be four, five, six, etc. But cannot be three or two or one because it's too small. So you just uh, uh, in the table you're going to find uh, all the most popular uh, palms: uh, chamedoras, carotis, uh, copernicia. Uh, coconuts, uh, Phoenix, uh, Livestonia, um, Royal Palm, Sables, uh, Trinex, uh, Vichas, etc., etc. So just count uh, the, go to the table, count the, the, the fronts and the root ball, the minimum root ball in inches, and that's it. You're good to go. Right? So, um, again, take a photo of this one here. They have it all the, um, additional information that you can find uh, about palms. Palms is very straightforward, it's very easy. Uh, you just are going to um, evaluate or inspect the palms at the time of delivery. So with times with the palms is in, in, in a delivery, you just go to do the inspections, not before. It's 
so just at the time of after delivery. All right, so let me finish this. Stop sharing. Uh, well, everybody knows Michael Fanidis. He's uh, the grand guru of uh, uh, product gradient standards. He's working in the extension for 20 plus uh, years. Uh, his dream is to be um, in, in Venice uh, to be, uh, <laughs> how you say, Mike? Uh, <laughs> uh, to do three inspections in, in Venice, in Italy, or in Greece. <laughs> this is uh, his dream. Uh, so he's like, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess, uh, can I share my screen at this point? Yes. <clears throat> All right, let's give this a try, guys. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think this will work. Okay, so that's that. Share. <clears throat> and are you all seeing that? Yeah, can you go uh, until uh, slide? Yes. Right? Can you go to slide, Mike? Yeah, perfect. Now, uh, how's that look? They have a gray box at the, in the slide. I don't know why. Is that any better? Do you Is have that some... any yeah, you can see it. They, still the gray box, but I think it's okay. Yeah, you have to hide the uh, Zoom toolbar. Hide the Zoom toolbar. Yeah, hide that. Uh, how am I going to do that? <laughs> uh, anybody have any good ideas on that? There's a little uh, icon to drop the menu and, and hide that toolbar. Or dock it at the bottom. So it gets out of the way. Well, I'm uh, broadcasting from home today. Our office is uh, undergoing renovation. So uh, maybe I'll stop sharing it. And so you're saying... You have to do it once you start sharing within the, within the sharing and make sure you pick at the bottom on uh, a checkbox for the audio and a checkbox for the video. Okay. And pick the window that has only the presentation mm -hmm. and then share. Okay, well now it went away. Let's see if I can find it again. We have one screen or two screen, Mike? I've got two. Okay. Okay. Try to now that's open. Try to now let's, go, let's go over this again. At the time I share, I'm going to share this. You're going to get a pop-up window that shows various screens. And you make sure you pick the one that has only the uh, that, that, you, that you're showing now. Obviously, you will have to, within the presentation program, you will also maximize that. So we only see that, not the notes on the side. <clears throat> there, you, you're sharing it now. There, there's like a tittle type of drop down menu where you can dock it or hide it. Under more? Or... Yeah, maybe maybe you just want to go at the bottom of your presentation program and go into presentation mode, the bottom right icon. Bottom right icon. Next to where the Zoom slider is, there is an icon there that corresponds to Zoom. There you go. Yeah, so we still have that those gray bars. We still have the gray bars, but I don't know, maybe, maybe out of the way for the most of the screen. Well, let's get going. I don't want to waste y'all's time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Go ahead. 
Anyway, uh, yeah, this is the reason I do not like doing Zoom presentations, but uh, it is what it is. So anyway, it's a pleasure to be with you guys today. Uh, I am uh, dealing with a cold, so if I start coughing a little bit, uh, I apologize. There's not much I can do about that. But anyway, um, so yeah, we have been uh, doing uh, tree grading classes for a number of years. And uh, just to kind of bring you back to speed, the Florida Grades and Standards uh, was actually developed back in the 50s. Imagine that when Florida was in its infancy in terms of development, South Florida in particular, and it, uh, you know, kind of limped along. And then in the 90s, I think in part because of the Landscape Inspectors Association in South Florida, it kind of picked up steam and uh, codes in cities and municipalities around uh, our area in particular started picking up the fact that, you know, tree quality matters. And we need to have a, a consistent communication between uh, the uh, development community, the uh, grower community, and the installation and ultimately inspection community. Now, I know that probably a number of those different communities are reflected today in, in the people that are attending the class. And so that's kind of the genesis of it. It is a Florida Department of Ag and Consumer Services uh, document that's been informed with uh, input from IFAS specialty uh, specialists, UF IFAS people, uh, as well as the green industry itself. Um, many of the uh, bigger growers in the state have had input on this document as it has uh, evolved over the over the years. Um, and we had uh, back in 2022, which would have been what last year, I guess, the most recent uh, revision uh, based upon input from the committee with uh, feedback from inspectors and growers and everyone else that wasn't, you know, that was, uh, has an interest in this and cared to contribute. So the presentation today, originally uh, developed by uh, Will, William Burns, a uh, former uh, uh, president of the uh, Landscape Inspectors Association of Florida and currently the, in retirement, the executive director, um, has been revised by myself with, because of uh, the, the changes that were reflected uh, in, in the 2022 revision, which was pretty minor. Um, so without any further ado, I want to get into it and just remind you all that in order to really grade a landscape, inspect the landscape per the code, per the, uh, per the plan that was approved, we need to be able to evaluate quality and not just the quality, but also the installation technique, okay? And I cannot emphasize enough the need for communication all the way along the line with your site plan committee, your, 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 the folks that are the develop, development community um, and the inspectors so that we can minimize the amount of haggling and, and surprises that might end up on an inspection ticket and cause some issues. Um, communication, communication, communication. So with that in mind, let's go through some some of the nitty gritty of the grades and standards and kind of why it's important. Um, these are a few slides from Dr. Ed Gilman, now in retirement, by the way, but still very active in, in, the, in the industry uh, as a cons retired consultant. Um, and we know that such things as uh, bark inclusions and co-dominance where you have multiple trunks may not appear to be a big deal early on when a tree is young and new in a landscape, but um, if that tree goes into the ground with defects, you can pretty well imagine those defects are going to manifest themselves over the years, particularly if there's poor maintenance and become hazardous issues down the road, which we certainly don't want to see happen, correct? And so these are just some slides about failures due to codominance or multiple trunks. And of course, bark inclusions, as you see, uh, hopefully you can see in the in the small uh, slides there that the darkened area of bark pinched inside the crotch of a, a, a basically a double trunk tree. That's the codominance is the double or triple trunk. I've seen trees with five, five to seven trunks. And uh, if you think about it, as a tree grows, it's not just elongating and getting taller. It's also getting uh, the trunks are expanding. Right. And so if you've got a tight angle to begin with, uh, that's a pressure point. And we sometimes see trees fail just due to self-wounding in the absence of, of storm force winds. Of course, storms make this all the more uh, likely to, to cause a failure. So I hope you all can recognize bark inclusions. I hope you all can recognize codominance because those 
uh, factors um, come into play when we're grading the trunk in the grades and standards pr uh, grading uh, procedure, which is seven steps uh, at, in the current form. So I also want to mention that um, when the committee developed this, they wanted to also recognize the fact that we have so much diversity in size and architectural types within our, our landscape palette. And uh, there are three matrices now, as, as we know them. The matrices meaning, uh, imagine like a, like a spreadsheet that provides minimum diameters of, 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 of trunk size and, and, and a, you know, match to a size of a root ball and so forth. We'll get into that in a minute. But basically we have three matrices right now. <clears throat> the first of which is the tall and wide trees. Uh, the second matrix would be your tall and narrow trees species. And then third matrix would be your short and wide trees and, and or multi-trunk. So let's take a look at what some of these will look like. And for example, in type one matrix, the tree matrix for tall and wide trees, you see it's going to provide you with tree height minimums for a given trunk caliper, as you see on the left column, trunk caliper. Um, that's measured, by the way, at six inches above grade using either a diameter tape or a, a little caliper that uh, those little cheap plastic things, we pick those up at tra tree uh, trade shows and, 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 and events all the time. Um, but for a given trunk caliper, as you see running down the column on the left side, we have specified minimums for tree height, crown diameter, and root ball size or container volume. And as you would think, it makes sense as the trunk caliper increases from, let's say, one and a half, which is the minimum shown in this matrix, all the way up to 10 inch, we would expect that the minimum acceptable tree height would increase, as you see it does, from five feet for a one and a half inch caliper tree all the way up to 20 um, feet for a 10 inch caliper tree. And similarly, we have increases in minimum crown diameters as measured by the width of the canopy versus its depth. It's an average of the two. And then as you see, whether they're container or, or B&B stock, they're also going to be prescribed minimum container or tree volume sizes on the root ball. Um, there are also some notes there, which I'm not gonna take the time to get into uh, regarding whether they're field grown, uh, what the height of the root ball minimum can be, and also um, if they're, uh, they've are they been cured, the trees have been cured after they've been harvested sometime, we can uh, allow for a few adjustments there. But the, these are the matrices. Here's the one for type two, the, the tall and narrow species, and type three, the short and wide species. And by the way, this document is available free of charge from the Florida Department of Ag and Consumer Services website, FDAX, just Google FDAX. Florida Grades and Standards. Uh, you can also obtain it free of charge from uh, Marshall Trees website, and I believe also Cherry Lake. Those were two of the bigger players that, uh, that were on the committee that developed this. Um, and just some examples of tall and wide. This is going to be your live oaks, your gumbo limbos, your mahoganies, your red maple. The, the, the tall and narrow are going to be such things as uh, Dahoon Holly and, of course, Italian Cypress and so forth. And then your short and wide include such things as crepe myrtles, uh, uh, tababuyas, and so forth. And the matrix uh, that a particular species belongs to is referenced in the grades and standards document. There's actually an index. And so you look up uh, Japanese blueberry and you'll read over and find out which of the three matrices that's in. So again, Royal Point Sienna would be matrix one, Italian Cypress matrix two, Tababuya matrix three. So um, kind of, and you know, you can debate a little bit about, well, is that really a matrix three or is it a matrix one? But, you know, the committee sought to simplify the uh, grades and standards in the 2022 version relative to what it had been in 2015. And we went from five matrices to uh, just three. Now, for those of us grading trees, learning to do this, uh, we had a colleague here in uh, Broward County uh, who's at our environmental uh, uh, management department, uh, for, formerly uh, 
uh, EPD, they've been under various names over the time, but he took it upon himself to create this nice little short tree grading form. And this is kind of what I follow and what we also use when we do landscape inspector certification. Uh, by the way, there is a training going on next Friday in uh, Homestead. So uh, as you can see, there are six, uh, six steps on this side of the sheet, the seventh over here on the back side of the sheet. Uh, if we were doing this in person, I would give you all a copy of this. Um, I am going to be going over this actually next week at the LIAF Fall Seminar, which is going to be in the City of Sunrise. So for those of you that are attending, this will be a bit of a primer. But you can see there are seven steps, and that's kind of what I want to go through with you guys today. Uh, and, and this is a nice little uh, way to kind of... Uh, categorize the procedure into sort of some logical steps, okay? Um, so we'll move into uh, step one, which is decide on the matrix of the tree you're dealing with. Is it matrix one, matrix two, or matrix three? Um, and also measure the caliper of the tree. And as I mentioned before, we take that measurement using either a diameter tape or as the, the slide here shows, a little... Uh, caliper measurement. Uh, this is one's from Marshall Tree Farm. And um, we always take it down. We round down to the nearest uh, number that is rele relevant to what's published in the matrix. Okay. So, you know, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, and so forth. So in this case, we're measuring, I think this was a red maple trunk. Uh, we're measuring it at six inches above grade. That's the standard place on the trunk where you need to measure the caliper for all trees four inches in diameter and under. If the tree comes out to be bigger than that, then we make that measurement at 12 inches. That's an important distinction. So six inches above grade for all trees four inches in diameter and under, and for trees bigger than that, we're gonna bump that up to 12 inches, okay? And step two is do we, we grade the trunk? Now, this is a very important step as we think about codominance and bark inclusions, the, the, the number one reason trees fail in Florida. Know that we have four grades, folks. Florida Fancy is the top grade. Florida number one is the second from the top. And that's typically what is spec on landscape inspectors' plans. Florida number one or better. The, the grade below Florida number one is Florida number two. Those trees typically uh, need a little help to get them to pass an inspection. Um, more often than not, in the form of pruning, particularly with this step grading the trunk. We'll get into the nitty gritty of that in a moment. And then the lowest grade is cull, C-U-L-L. Cull trees have so many issues that we don't believe that they're remediable in terms of being able to remain on a job site. So. As an inspector, you're going through, you're looking to make sure that one, the landscape matches the approved plan, two, that the trees that are installed are of the correct quality, Florida grade number one or better, and three, that they're installed correctly, not too deeply, they're staked correctly, and, and yada, yada. So for Florida Fancy, we typically look for a reasonably straight trunk, well-spaced scaffold branches, and no codominance in the lower 90% of the trunk. So you could have codominance, meaning that the, the trunk, the main leader, if you will, forks in the top 10%. But in all cases, the main leader needs to be uh, higher than any of its competing codominant uh, limbs, okay? Or, or limb, I should say. <clears throat> Excuse me, Florida number one. Now, this is a step below the Florida fancy. Um, I'll be honest with you, other than oaks, I, I don't see a lot of fancies out there, but plenty of number ones, and those are acceptable to approve for job sites and, and installation time, inspection time. In this case, with a number one, as we grade the trunk, we're looking at, does that trunk have codominance in the upper half or lower half? of the tree. And by that, I mean from basically from the ground level to the tippy top of the leader. If you figure out where that midpoint is, if there's a codominance in the lower half, it's a number two. If the codominance occurs in the upper half, we can get away with that 
as a number one. However, again, in order for that tree to be a number one, the main leader has to be taller than any other codominant. Oh, I should say the other codominant that, that's up there, okay? So here's the Florida number two. You can see the bifurcation is below that dotted line, meaning it's below the midpoint. Whereas with the Florida grade number one, you can see that codominance, that fork, if you will, occurs above that midpoint, that dashed line. Is that clear? That's super important. Okay, there's a couple of other reasons why we might downgrade a Florida number one to a Florida number two or call. <laughs> and that has to do with other issues. And so the issue of a dog leg, you can see here that the dog leg occurs at a point below any of the canopy branches, okay? Where the first lowest branch starts from that point up, we call that the canopy. Below that point, we call that the clear trunk zone, correct? Everything that's been limbed up, that part of the trunk, clear trunk zone, cannot have a dog leg in it whose offset is greater than the diameter of the trunk at the point where the offset occurs. So in other words, if you're looking at the trunk, does the trunk deviate uh, from, from straight by more than the diameter of the trunk at that point? That's considered a dog leg. Now, if there's a dog leg in the canopy, we don't concern ourselves with that in terms of downgrading, only in the clear trunk zone. The other reason we might... Uh, consider a tree a number two would be if we have three or more nearly equal diameter trunks in the upper half, okay? So the tree either divides into two below the midpoint or it divides into three or more trunks above the midpoint. Those are all criteria that would make the tree meet the Florida number two status. And then finally, the call is where you have an incredibly misshapen leader, as you might see there on the left, or you have multiple codoms in the lower half. Okay, not just two, but you have multiple, three or more, nearly equal diameter trunks. All right, so that's step two, grade the trunk. I hope you're all still with me. Um, we, um, we're going to now move on to step three, and this is where we grade the crown uniformity. This is sort of a subjective evaluation is how does the canopy appear? We're done, we're done considering the trunk. If everything checked out okay, we've got a number one or maybe we've got a fancy because of trunk structure. Now we're gonna take a look at the canopy, the, the shape of it. And basically there's two choices here, either it's a fancy or it's a number two, all right? There is no Florida grade number one or call. I don't know why the committee did that other than they were trying to simplify things. And I think some of the sentiment behind that was that when we're grading trees, for the most part, the crown uniformity, while it's important at the get-go, eventually many, if not all those limbs, that canopy that we see at installation is temporary. Think about it, you know, 15, 20 years down the road, the tree, especially if it's a street tree, will be limbed up to maybe 14 feet. And if the tree was coming in at 12 feet, all of those limbs that we evaluated at the inspection time no longer will be present. So um, this is basically, in my opinion, a yes or a no, but the way the committee worded it was either, okay, it's a Florida fancy or it's a number two. There is no call or first Florida number one. So here's an example of what would be considered uh, Florida number two or unacceptable for crown uniformity, okay? So you can see as we go back and look at the ones that are acceptable, they might have small voids, a little bit of misshapenness, you know, but nothing crazy. Um, and quite frankly, you know, the, the tree is somewhat pleasing to beautiful uh, anywhere and anywhere in between. Uh, if you're gonna downgrade the tree, uh, as a number two or un means basically it's unacceptable. That's an ugly tree. And as inspectors, you know, I always say to myself, if my commissioner drove past this property that I just approved, what would they think? Would they say, gee, did Mike approve those ugly looking trees? They might've had straight trunks or maybe they were one-sided or they had really big voids because limbs had been broken in transit 
or maybe uh, the tree was grown in a very crowded nursery or shoved up against a building, you know, God only knows. Could be storm damage. So we've basically now graded the trunk and the crown uniformity. So we're at step four. Remember, there's only seven steps, guys. So we're almost we're almost there. And whatever we decided was the lowest grade when we graded the trunk and when we graded the canopy uniformity, that's what it is. And this is a mistake that some of the students have made in the classes, because let's say they give it a Florida fancy on trunk and they give it a number two on, on count crown uniformity. Then they go ahead and average it and say, well, it was a fancy, but it was also a two, so we'll call it a one. No, it's whatever the lowest grade was. So if you call that canopy a number two at the point you graded the uniformity, it's a number two. And theoretically, you could stop the stop the inspection right there because number twos are not allowed in pretty much every landscape plan I've ever looked at. Um, and we can talk about remediation. That's kind of a separate issue, but stay with me um, because now we're going to move on to step five. We have another shot at downgrading the tree in steps five and six. And then seven, we'll deal with the root system and then we're done. So step five, this is considered major downgrades. If any one of these five statements, A, B, C, D, or E is true, we downgrade the tree one more grade from what we gave it at step four, okay? So A, the tree does not meet the height requirement. Where do we get that information? From our matrix, right? B, crown does not meet the diameter requirement. Where do we get that information? Whoop. <laughs> From the matrix. Okay. C, root ball is not secure enough to successfully transplant. All right. Trees that have poor root systems, they're either undeveloped, maybe they've just been recently stepped up, or maybe they are all circling roots. You know, it was it was root bound or pot bound, whatever you want to call it, as a three gallon, and it was stepped up into a 25, and the, uh, the root system looks like a butter churn. Everything's going around and all twisted. That tree is not going to be secure in the new larger container ever. So this is another opportunity for us to knock the grade that we gave that tree in step four. Um, uh, yeah, and then 5D, the root baller container is undersized. Where do we get that? The matrix, okay? So this matrix becomes very important. And then last but not least, 5E, the tree with a trunk caliber larger than two inches requires a stake to hold the trunk erect. One of my pet peeves is going past uh, job sites where inspectors have approved everything, signed off on it, the, uh, the occupants have gotten their CO and all of the training stakes from the nursery are still on the trees in the parking lot. You know what that tells me? That tells me that that inspector did not do his or her job because if those trees were larger than two inches and they still have stakes on them, that inspector could not answer step 5E. Okay, now in the 2015 version, it used to be one inch. The committee raised it to two inches. Uh, you can debate the wisdom of that separately, but that's what it is right now. That tree is larger than two inches and it still has a stake on it. That stake has to come off in order for you to do a grades and standards inspection. The reason being, trees get, they're like people, if they can, hang on and, you know, they get a little bit lazy, they're not going to stand on their own without that stake. And a lot of research has showed the benefits of staking uh, as the tree ages really, really uh, fade into the distance and to the point where it's not a good thing. So anyway, if any one of these five steps is true, we reduce the grade by one we had given the tree in step four. If two or more, Let's say the, let's say the uh, crown diameter is undersized and the root ball or container size is smaller than what it should be. We can actually make that number one into a call or that fancy into a number two. 
So two or more statements are true. We reduced the grade. We gave that tree in step four by two. If only one of these five statements is true, we reduce the grade from step four by one grade. Okay. Step six, moving right along. <laughs> so those are the major downgrades. Step six is about the minor downgrades. These are issues that are still important, but perhaps not as glaring or uh, you know, concerning perhaps as, as certainly a major downgrade. So in this case now, we have to have two true statements. And there are six of them. These are the first three. We'll go through all six. If two or more are true, we reduce the grade again that we gave the tree in step five. So you see it's a cumulative progression as we move through these steps. Some of you may be very confused at this point. And listen, I totally get it. This is something, it's almost like learning a language. You have to practice it in order to really kind of internalize it. And trust me, you know, a seasoned inspector doesn't carry a sheet with them for every tree they inspect. You're going to get to a point if you if you internalize this where you can grade these trees in your head as you walk past them and look at them, you know, a little bit critically. Uh, but, you know, you're not going to have the time to go through and, and fill out a sheet for every tree on a property. Of course not. Uh, so step six, if two or more of the following statements are true, reduce the grade determined in step five by one. If three or more are true, we knock that grade from step five down by two grades. OK. So what are some of these minor defects? Flush cuts. Hopefully you all know what a branch collar is. That's the little swelling where a branch attaches to the trunk, which gives that branch strength of attachment. Branch collars are good and should be left on trees. If you don't know what one is like, again, I encourage you to get a copy of the grades and standards. They have oodles of photos and diagrams on all of these issues. Glossaries, oh God, it's a wonderful document and it's free. So flush cuts are where we cut that branch off, take the branch collar with it, expose trunk wood. Not a good thing. Good place for disease to enter the tree. B, branch stubs. This is like the opposite of, <laughs> of, a stub, of a flush cut. It's where you cut the branch, but you cut it short and leave part of it on the tree. And aside from looking ugly, those wounds often don't close over properly. Uh, C, open trunk wounds are evident. So here we're not talking so much about flush cuts. I suppose they could be, but more often than not, these are um, mechanical wounding that might have occurred uh, during harvest, during transport. Uh, sometimes we see, you know, nurseries where the trees are tethered to uh, a, a metal cable, as they often are in most nurseries in South Florida, containerized trees, um, that wound where that cable meets the trunk and there's an abrasion, that can open up and become a concern if the wounds are greater than 10% of the trunk circumference and or more than two inches tall. That's the nitty gritty there. So uh, we have had some overzealous inspectors grading down trees because of uh, surface abrasions, scuffs. We do not concern ourselves with that. I am talking about wounds where you can say, aha, I see trunk wood, and this wound is more than two inches tall, uh, or it's more than 10% of the trunk circumference. Okay, clear enough? And then the other three steps, there were seven. They got rid of G when they did the revision. I'm showing you what it was. More than 10% of the crown exhibits necrosis, chlorosis, or damage from pest diseases or tip dieback. Um, also, the crown is thin and sparsely foliated. That's step, step 6E. Make sure you consider the time of year. We are going into the more fall into winter at this point in the uh, calendar year. And in another month or two months, some of our trees may begin to shed some leaves. Um, you know, cypress trees are often barren for several months in South Florida during the winter time. So again, you know, use common sense. If it's the middle of the summer and the tree doesn't have any leaves on it, well, that's not a good thing. <laughs> if it's the middle of January or we've just had a cold snap, uh, that may be a reason. 
And so we know how to evaluate that. I hope as horticulturists, there is a green scratch test, either with your fingernail or a, let's say a little pen knife, pocket knife, scratch those limbs. And if they're green and limber, they don't snap and break off, then the tree is still alive. It's just dormant. And then lastly, uh, F, there is included bark between trunk and major lateral branch or between main trunks. So a lot of arborists don't understand what included bark is, believe it or not. But again, it's when bark is pinched between two very closely spaced limbs or trunks. And it often looks like a valley. In other words, it's like, like an indentation. And so... <clears throat> If you've got that bark inclusion, bark pinched inside the crotch, and again, there's great photos in the grades and standards document that show you what this looks like. You can you can get you know pretty well schooled in that. So anyway, these are the six minor downgrade steps. It takes again two to downgrade the tree by one grade, three or more to downgrade it by two. And last but not least, folks, is step seven. And this has to do with the root ball and the root system. Two parts to step seven. A, the topmost structural root. When the trunk comes down and meets the soil level, right, there's often hopefully a flare if the tree's planted correctly at the correct depth and not buried as some nurseries like to do. Um, you should begin to see a little buttressing, a little flaring of the trunk and then the top of what we consider the structural roots or uh, first order roots, some people call them. Uh, I've got a photo of that here. You can see uh, in the photo, that the photograph, you see those, those major anchor roots right there uh, at the soil surface. And so that's what we're looking for. And we want to see that those are not more than two inches below the top of the root ball, soil surface, okay? So, if the tree looks like a telephone pole in the ground, there's no visible flare, you can't see the top of any structural roots, that would be a point where you might want to consider excavating a little bit to determine how deep the tree may be planted. And this was probably the most common item on punch lists when I did inspections for Town of Davy as their first urban forester a number of years ago. It's simple. If the nurseries are planting the trees at the right depth and not plunging them, and if the installers are putting them in at the right depth, inspectors should not have to get their fingernails dirty. Um, so anyway, that structural root needs to be no deeper than two inches below the top of the soil surface. I used to like in my pre-cons to tell the installer, I want to see a little bit of flare. I want to see a little bit of the top of that, 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 that structural root. So if you do find that, the punch list could be written to say, you know, do some excavation or take the Wellington tape off the tree and elevate it and restake it, replant it. Um, the other part of this, uh, 7B, one or more roots greater than one-tenth of the trunk caliper circle more than one-third of the way around in the top quarter of the root ball. Now, that is a mouthful. But again, circling roots, we get concerned about. They can strangle the trunk. Uh, they they never straighten out on their own, right? Um, and if you have circling roots, that is a makes a tree predisposed to stability issues down the road. So you can see the strikeouts from one third and one half over the years as the committee has uh, deliberated on this issue. Uh, they've gotten a little more, uh, I don't know if I want to say grower friendly or whatever, but the presumption is, and I asked Dr. Gilman, why are we keeping changing this, this step 7B to making these defective roots shallower and shallower? And his comment was, well, the research says that it's really the roots in the top portion of the root ball that are going to be the permanent root system. And to that end, those are the ones we're concerned about. And to make this a little bit more this, to explain this a little bit more, the committee asked that these diagrams be put in that you see up at the top. So if you have three or more structural roots, free and clear of any circling roots, the tree is acceptable, even if it has a circling root that is underneath those three structural roots. The moment that circling root 
is above or on top of any of those three, minimum three structure roots, then we get concerned because that root will potentially cause strangulation. Okay, so on the left, this would be acceptable and not a call. On the right, that's a call. Now you can cut that root, that offending root, with a root saw. If it's not real huge, you could use a, maybe a falco or a lopper, falco pruner. Uh, root saws work well. Um, try to find the point where it originates. Just cut it out, and that tree is good to go. So, <laughs> again, all three conditions must be met. The root needs to circle more than a third of the way around in the top quarter and be at least one-tenth the diameter of the trunk at that point or greater. And we can cut those roots again so long as they are not larger than one-third the trunk diameter. The presumption there, I am assuming, is, is that a really big circling root could conceivably, uh, if you cut it, cause the tree some... Uh, some stress. I actually am not sure I believe that, but it is what it is. So anyway, a lot to unpack here. Um, in the time remaining, which looks like we have eight minutes, I want to do a practice one with you. Uh, we're going to first look over just a few review points here. So we're done with the seven-step grading procedure. We're just going to look at some issues. Um, <clears throat> so here we have caliper measurement, okay? At six inches above grade, this looks like it was a red maple, two inches. If that caliper was reading one and three quarters or 1.8 inches, we would reduce that reading to one and a half. We always round down, okay? All right, so here we have an example of that. It's not quite two inches, so we're going to call that one and a half, whereas this was definitely two, okay? Um, Codominance. This is what codominance looks like. And to some extent, I think you've got a bark inclusion developing. You see that very narrow rolled in valley. That's where the bark is going to become pinched and trapped inside that crotch. Uh, I've seen trees with this condition that left been left go. Uh, eventually, you begin to see a, a stain and, and, and liquid coming out of that crotch. You've probably all seen Older trees with trunks that are they're either wet or, or darkened with, with the, the products of decay, exudates running down from the crotch. Um, so these are codominant, and, they, and there's a bark inclusion there beginning to form. Um, also, remember the position, the location in the top half or the bottom half matters. When we're grading the top uh, of the tree, again, if you have codominance, as you see here, uh, Remember, in order to be a number one or a, or a Florida Fancy, the main leader, this takes a little bit of eye, eye work here, the main leader needs to be above any of its competition. Now, I'm not going to get into remediation, but I do want to tell you <laughs> these things are so simple to correct by simply taking a, a pole pruner and, and you know making a few reduction cuts uh, on the, the limbs that are you know, threatening the uh, eminence, the pro predominance of the leader. That's what this is all about. Uh, good tree versus bad tree in terms of uniformity of canopy. Well, this one is one-sided, don't you think? So I would probably knock this on step three and call that a number two because I don't think that canopy is very attractive. We need to look at the tree from all 360 degrees. Uh, this is just an example of some scuffs, surface abrasions. I would not downgrade for this. But that... Mm, that's getting questionable. I still might let that go. There's a lot of subjectivity to this, folks. Uh, now, this would be an example of a flush cut. Okay, they pretty much removed everything, uh, including the branch collar. That's a good cut. Do not take off for a, a, a cut that was made correctly or a cut that is closed over. That is perfectly acceptable. So, um, and then on the pest, uh, chlorosis, necrosis, or freedom from uh, more than 10% uh, damage from pests. This poor little tababuya here is suffering from uh, what looks like some nutritional deficiency as well as polapothrips, which is an insect infestation. So 
that's more than 10% of the canopy. So that would be considered, uh, I think that's step uh, 6D. So that would be a minor downgrade there. And then uh, a root ball that is too deep. Here I'm, I'm looking at what looks like a telephone pole in the ground. So I'm thinking, where is that first order structural root? It, it's got to be within two inches of that soil surface, or I'm going to reduce the grade. And be aware of circling roots. Okay. So, uh oh. I guess that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions? And Henry, I'm going to have to have you kind of help moderate here. Thank you, Micah. Very. Amazing presentation. Yeah, we have two questions here. Um, step CD chlorosis should be uh, one uh, downgraded by, by itself. Okay, uh, say that again. Which? Yeah, the 6D, the chlorosis, what you mentioned, just mentioned, it should be one uh, downgrade by itself. This is a comment. So I guess uh, she said, Referring it, that has to it, it be... is considered it is considered a minor downgrade. So if if the tree has all things being equal and okay, other than that, uh, you can't downgrade it. Yeah, this is what she's in recommending. Other words, in other words, if if the tree has greater than ten percent chlorosis, necrosis, or pest damage, but other than that, it's perfect. <laughs> you know. You couldn't downgrade it because it takes two. That that's a minor downgrade. It takes two true statements in step six. Um, and, and some of you may be shocked at that, uh, but that is what it is. I you know, and let's think about it. When that tababuya defoliates, uh, maybe it won't be affected by holopathrips again. Maybe somebody will drench it with a midacloprid or something. Um, but it, as it is, it is considered a, a minor downgrade. It's not a major downgrade. In yeah. other words, it's something that's correctable. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ralph says decay within the trunk uh, will be recommended uh, removal. I mean, if you find, uh, like, uh, I guess on Ralph, you can correct me if I'm reading this wrong. If you find decay in the trunk, would you recommend? to re remove the tree? Well, uh, you know, the, the grades and standards doesn't really speak to that other than in, um, you know, step six, where we're talking about open trunk wounds, step six C. Uh, I would assume if there's decay that's sizable enough that you can see it, you could make that determination as to the size of that wound. You know, it's 10% of the trunk circumference is not that much. Um, and, and, you know, I've seen wounds much larger than two inches in height. It's, it's either or. So I'm assuming if you're actually having, you know, visible trunk decay, you've probably got a wound that's, that's of a, a size that you could consider that uh, also a, a minor downgrade. But again, it's not a major downgrade. Um, I, I want to make, a, a, get folks to realize that you know, there's a lot of things that inspectors look at when they grade trees, and the grades and standards does not speak to all of them. Um, and if you're grading according to grades and standards, you you know, in order to be on solid ground, you need to pretty much, you know, stick, stick to the book. Um, I made the analogy, you can write in your code that every... Every tree that's installed on the approved plan has to have a ten dollar bill, uh, you know, clipped to the to the leader. You can put anything you want in your code. Nobody's stopping you. Uh, you probably will get pushback, but you know that's not a grades and standards issue. Uh, it used to be that the planting depth was not a grades and standards issue. And as I told you, when I was an inspector back in two thousand three to two thousand five for Davy, the most common item on my punch list was the tree was planted too deeply. But that's not a grades and standards issue. Now it is because they've added that in step 7A. Um, so I guess in closing, you know, get a copy of the grades and standards. Study it. My God, it's free. If you have a printer, just <laughs> download it and print it out. Uh, you can also purchase them. Uh, the uh, bookstore, uh, what is it? The Bet Rock here in Hollywood has them. Uh, 
Uh, but I just, I typically just downgrade it and print it out or downgrade it, <laughs> download it and print it out. Um, and again, the, I hope this does not overwhelm you, this, this, this procedure, but it, it becomes uh, pretty automated the more you practice it. And, uh, you know, uh, you're not going to have three hours to spend on an inspection site, at least like a residential one you might on a com big commercial site, but uh, this stuff is important and uh, it's a fluid document and they'll probably be coming out with another revision in 2026, 20, 2027. 20, and if you feel strongly about an issue, uh, you know, it, it is a public, uh, there's a, you know, there's a format for uh, providing feedback to the committee. I'm not on the committee. I have made a number of comments over the years, but uh, some of them they've taken, some of them they haven't. But um Consider becoming a certified landscape inspector through LIAF if you have not already. We offer those training classes uh, each year in uh, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. Uh, it would be our dream to go statewide with this. We have done a few of these classes in Central Florida. I've never done anything in the North, but um, you know we we need volunteers. We need people that. Uh, you know, can uh, can help us deliver this educational program and and uh, the certification exam that goes with it. So I want to thank you all for your attention today. Uh, thank you, Henry. And thank you to the Miami Day uh, LIAF chapter. You guys stay safe. Have a great day. Thank you, Mike. And you have uh, so many questions here. Uh, I really uh, um, recommend you guys to send the questions uh, directly to Mike. There is a very good one here. I don't know. You have one second, Mike. Uh, yeah, it's just, my, let me let me just give him my email. It's um, M as in Mike O R F F as in Frank Morph at ufl.edu. Very simple. It's even easier than Henry's. Morph at ufl.edu. I'll be happy to answer your question. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. And um, please uh, remember the survey. This is a very good. Uh, we need to have your 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 feedback over there, and also for the CEUs. So thank you uh, very much. Uh, have a great uh, weekend and please uh, you know, inspect the trees and, and uh, plant the trees, uh, you know, good quality trees is a, is a, is a plus. It's a win-win for everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.